Thanks again for joining me on EHA's Who Are EHO's video series. Today, we're speaking with Chris, an EHO who works in Indigenous communities in Western Australia. Where are you working and what's your role? Now that I think about it, I've probably worked on across 26 at different Aboriginal communities and across the span of four years, um, all based in the regional and uh, rural areas of WA. How would you describe environmental health to someone who doesn't know what it is? Put, the best way I describe it is we address anything within the natural, the built environment that directly impacts human health. Uh, it can be anything as simple as uh, teaching someone how to be able to properly store food, uh, being able to undertake a tick tick control on uh, certain pro on certain dogs or animal management within communities, uh, teaching kids not to share beds with dogs that are basically covered in mange, um, undertaking water infrastructure or something simple as fixing a kitchen tap. It's all basically anything that can directly impact human health that comes or stems directly from their environment, be it the natural environment or the built environment, it's probably the best way I describe it. Were you always attracted to the environmental health profession? I did kind of was drawn to it, but I didn't even realize it at the time. So I started with an environmental management major at, uh, at Griffith, and through that, I had a few experiences where I, um, well, you know, I'm sort of actually learning about what I actually enjoy and what I don't enjoy. Literally, about maybe 2013, I pieced it all together, and I found the discipline of environmental health, and uh, I was able to pretty much just focus it and mainstream it from there. So. Yeah. <laughs> what do you love most about being an EHO? Being an Aboriginal environmental health officer, you're able to actually, you know, make people's lives, well, you actually get more evidence really of actually making people's lives better, really. What are some of the challenges you face? You know, you could be away from your home, away from your family and friends for, you know, weeks at a time. Um, other situations that you can have is where basically you've come in, you've tried to be supplied as best you can, you encounter a problem that you've pretty much got nothing for. So you either have to improvise and try and, and, try and mitigate a um, solution, or you basically just got to say that, you know, you'll have everything next time you come out, which could easily be one, two, three, sometimes even as far as six months. Describe a typical working week. Weeks basically go different to differ. You could have one week where you spend an entire week in the office, undertaking plans, preparations, filling out paperwork and uh, writing reports. Or if you were to go out more remote, you know, Monday, you'd basically pack your vehicle and head on out. Next day, you daily inspections of, well, inspections really of uh, people's properties and uh, collect some data to check out the local dog com animal community and, uh, provide tick treatment if needed, make notes for uh, when you're undertaking a next uh, veterinary program to see uh, who exactly wants to be desexed. Uh, pest control is another big thing. So you may actually go out, you may actually spray exteriors of uh, certain buildings. And then literally Friday, it's, um, we're back in and weekends, it's usually just uh, reorganizing yourself to basically just start again. What's something that you know now that you wish you had have known at the beginning of your career? Expect the unexpected and don't actually follow a mainstream path. When I actually graduated from university in 2015, I didn't think, the last place I thought I would be is out in the middle of the, de of the desert, uh, basically just running around trying to actually catch dogs and uh, fix toilets. But um, in, a, you know, in one of those bizarre twists of fate, I've actually come to enjoy it because I realize now that this line of work actually brings out the best in me as opposed to you know, being in a more developed area, um, being in a major metropolis, really. What advice would you give to someone wanting to become an EHO? Brush up on your science, brush up on your technical stuff, and talk to everyone. Everyone always has a piece of advice, be it they, you know, be it they just a simple cook, a veterinarian, a uh, building inspector, everyone. Thank you for sharing your role as an environmental health officer, Chris. No worries, and thank you very much. To see more videos in the Who Are EHO's video series, be sure to subscribe to the EHA YouTube channel and keep an eye on our socials for video release updates. We'll see you next time.